Amen. This week is Missions Week. Amen. Somebody say Missions Week. And uh, I, I just want to share a couple of stories. Uh, prophetically, I want to share that. And then we're going we're gonna to look at the report. But I want you to know the fact that we are here this morning is because of somebody else's labor of the mission war. How many of you know that? That the fact we are here this morning, um, it started from the foundation of the world when God said, let us make man in our image. And, and the, I want you to know that our God is a missional God. Amen. God, is, God has a mission in his heart. From the beginning, he had mission in his heart. And the farmers, the first commission, I call it the first commission. We have great commission. And that we have first commission. The first commission of God is to man is that you be blessed, multiply, you know, subdue the earth, and have dominion over the earth. Somebody say that's the first commission of God. And it started from then throughout the, throughout the generation, throughout the world, you see that, you know, God begin to, you know, begin to unpack his mission for the world, his mission for us through, through Abraham, through his sons and daughters. And then Moses came into the picture. And then we have the prophets of the minor prophets. We have major prophet. And then the miracle happened when God said, you know, enough is enough. I am going to get into the mission itself. Amen. And that's where he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his, not many of his son, his one and only begotten son, Jesus, on the cross, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have, come on, have, it's not a life. From the beginning, God has been on a mission, and God has been on a mission of pursuing mankind. You and I are product of a father that had been pursuing us from the foundation of the world. And the story continued. Jesus came and he showed us the heart of the father. He began to say, Jesus said, I only see and do what of the, I only see, I only do, and I only say what the father is saying, doing. And Jesus' heart, you know, Jesus' lifestyle revealed the heart of God for us. And, and as, as the story continues that when Jesus, before Jesus, go, Jesus went to the earth, he looked at his disciple, and I believe Jesus looked at 12 of all his disciples, and he didn't just look at the disciple, but through the, through the ages, through the moments, through the generation, he looked at now, 2024, and he gave his disciple a commandment and said, go and make all you know, disciple of all nations. Amen. Jesus looked through the eyes. I believe, you know, can you imagine this? Just use your imagination. Jesus and disciples sitting together. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. The gospel came to my family when for six months, a missionary from Singapore came and knocked at the, at the door of our, my grandma in the Ladang Thai Tak near Kotatingi. For six months, my grandma resisted the, the missionary. He said, we don't want you guys. You are, a, you are a noisy people, Jesus people. We don't want you. For six months, they knock on the door. One, time, one, one, one evening, my grandma said, because they were persistent with their appearance at the, at the door post, they begin to, you know what? They open the door, and my grandma opened the door, and that's where the gospel was preached to my family. Lo and behold, all my uncles are serving the Lord. All my aunties are serving the Lord. I think we have about eight or nine of them, of my uncles and, uncles and aunties, and all my cousins, I think, I think except one or two, all of them are serving the Lord. In fact, one of my cousins is here. They're serving the Lord because one missionary decided to appear on the door for six months on the door of somebody else's house. You and I are the labor of a mission world. You and I are product of someone else that were willing to go, either to go to pray or to give, and God, you know, these are the labor. We are life is a mission life. God is a mission God. And I want you to, I want you to this morning, I want to, I, I just want to talk a few stories that's burning in my spirit and then we're going to pray. I pray by end of this next 15 minutes that you will catch the spirit of mission in your heart. The spirit of mission, the heart of God is for people who get the spirit of mission. And one powerful story that comes to my mind, I think it's in Mark, uh, can you guys put that scripture? I think it's in Mark chapter four. And, and we're talking about Jesus uh, was on a mission with the, with the Father's heart. You know, Jesus was on a mission. Guys, put the scripture that I gave you earlier. Uh, yeah, there you go. You know, uh, for time reason, right? You know, because we got some other thing. For time reason, here yeah, Jesus, you know, Jesus get on a board, you know, uh, was, uh, let's do um, Mark chapter four. 
Let me turn to this real quick. Mark, Mark t- t- chapter 4, uh, verse 35. On that day when evening came, he said to them, let us go on to the other side. You know, I want you to know Jesus was a very strategic man. Jesus was one of the most strategic. Jesus, you know, Jesus was one of the most, um, you know, I wrote this down. Jesus was one of the most uh, brilliant mind. And Jesus was very most efficient man on earth because he knew that he has only three and a half years to make a difference. Imagine he knew in, the, in his will, three and a half years, I, I, I got a, every moment in his life counts. Every moment, every decision, every path it takes in Jesus' life counts. And in these three and a half years, whatever Jesus did is so profound, so powerful. So when you read the word, you know, look at Jesus with the perfect theology. When you feel bored to read the word, just read the life of Jesus will get on fire. He's the most strategic person. He knows exactly what the Father is saying. He was in that flow of the Holy Spirit. And here, Jesus, in the scripture, the same day, and before this day, let me give you a contact. Before the days, he got on a boat and preaching to multitude of people. Now he's talking about different things. He's talking about the parable of the seed. He's explaining the kingdom of God. He's saying, when you sow, you know, you will reap. And he's unpacking all the powerful revelation. And he's doing on the boat. And Lord, a multitude of that problem. He prayed for all of them, knowing Jesus, you know, people are hungry, come praying for all that. In the midst of that revival that was happening, in the midst of his, in the, you know, in, the, in, the, in that moment, it takes off. It takes off to a very place that nobody want to go because the scripture says Jesus got on a boat and t- told the disciple, let us, let us go on the, over, on the other side. Just follow me with the scripture. Those who are sleeping, say amen. <laughs> wow, today everybody's awake, praise God. And then, verse 37, right, just follow me because the word, and I want you to get the word, 37 says, when they were in the boat, a great fierce wave came. You know, imagine like all the d- disciple, you know, the disciple Jesus, we just had a powerful big meeting, and you want to get on a boat, and knowing there's going to be a wave, you know, there's going to be a storm. Amen. There's going to be a storm, and that's why they got so irritated with Jesus, the disciples, and say, Jesus, don't you know we are dying, and you are taking a nap. Jesus, why are you sleeping? You know, and, and was, was 39, Jesus himself was in the stern, sleep on the cushion, and they, and they woke up and said to him, teacher, don't you know that you care that we are perishing? Was 39, he got up and rebuked the wind and said to them, be still, hush, be still. And the wind come, came down, and it became a perfect calm. And he said to them, why are you afraid, you little faith? And they, they were much afraid and they would say to one another, who's, who's this that even wind and, what, wind and waves obey him? And verse 5, that's the, the anchoring of, of, of this whole story in verse 5. In the midst of the biggest crowd that he's seeing and teaching, Jesus has ended up in chapter 5, verse 1, where he goes to one of the most hardest places in Jerusalem. He goes to one of the most demonic places in the Jerusalem. Verse 5, verse 1 say, Then they came to another side of the city, to the country of uh, Gardenese. And then the second one, please. And he came out to the boat. Immediately they met out, uh, out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. It was one of the most unpleasant time and probably with the disciple are wondering Jesus we just had a great time and then you got us into the storm now you got us into the most hardest city on earth these people you know this is a demonic place I don't feel good I feel don't feel the glory like how we're feeling in the church this is like so un- unconven- inconvenient this is not where we want to be and Jesus you know looking at the you know next verse Jesus right seeing from the distance you know that man came ran up to Jesus verse 7 says with a loud voice he says, Son of God, Mosai, what do you do? You know, wh- I implore you, don't torment us, leave from here. And was aid, for he was saying to them, you know what Jesus was saying? He's saying, come out of this man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, what is your name? Can you imagine? Came out of the storm, and here the disciple is going to have some good time, like some of us, you know, just stand out and say, Jesus, what's next? We're just going to have some break after long ministry. Here, Jesus having a conversation with the most demonic man of his hour, and Jesus say, asking him, what's your name? Why are you asking for a name? Are you going to have a tea time together, Jesus? I don't know, right? And here, 
the demon you know, to make it really bad, to make it really like inconvenient, talking about inconvenient, so inconvenient, and they're saying, we are many in one. Can you imagine that? We are a lot of demons in one person. And Jesus began to pray for him. And you know the story, you know, the, the demon came out. Jesus gave them permission to go to the pigs. I don't know why pigs, but you know, it just happened. Huh? Just your power. <laughs> yeah, bakute, I don't know. <laughs> bakute. Just pray when you eat your bakute, okay? I don't know what is in there. <laughs> but, um, you know, at verse 17, they begin to employ him to leave the region. Jesus went to a place, most demonic, nobody wants to listen, and here people are saying, please get out of here. On the other side of the city, people were listening to him. And this side, people say, we don't want you. We don't want you. L- listen to this carefully. And it's beginning to get into the boat, and the demonic guy comes, set free from the demon, and says, Jesus, can I just feel follow you? I don't know if you've seen people get free. You know, I, I tell you what, um, I don't know if you said people get free. When people are really get free, they will serve the Lord. Yeah. When people are really set free and their heart is the affection towards the Lord, they will say, at all costs, we want to follow you, Jesus. If there's some part of your heart that's not burning for the Lord, most probably something has to leave you. I'm not saying you have demons, okay? Please don't. <laughs> Maybe we just need to worship more with the Lord and just do something to be with Him. And when He went away and began to, begin to proclaim in Dec- uh, Decapolis what gro- great things Jesus have done for Him, everyone was amazed. And when He crossed over to the boat on the other side, a large crowd gathered around. And so he stayed by the seashore. He, 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 I wanted to look at me this morning like this. Here Jesus having a moment is doing what the Father is saying. Do this, do this, do this. And then he had a small break. And the break is to reach for one soul that was suffering on the other side. Wow. They were suffering from the other side. You know, only if, uh, this is my thought this morning, church, before I, I say a few things about missions, right? Only if the, ch- you know, I, I want you to know there's no heart that's too hard for Jesus. Amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. There's no nation that's too hard for Jesus. There's no people group that God cannot reach. Do you know that at 2023, this is mesh mission facts, in 2020, no, sorry, in 20, 2033, we will have all the Bible language in every language, under 90 language probably, you know, we will have all the language already translated. Okay? All the languages, why? Because we are literally living in Matthew 24 when the gospel will be preached to us ends of the earth and then the end will come. The Lord is hastening the, 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 the translation of the Bible all around the world, why? The gospel is about to preach next 10 years. It's a year of a double harvest for all over the world. We, you know, that's the heart of God. I want you to know you can be, we can be sitting in this church, we can be sitting in this chair, but I want you to know our God is a global God. If you're sitting here, you are a global Christian. We are part of a movement all around the world. Whatever we do here, whatever we are doing here, it affects generation, it affects city, it affects nations around the world. Amen. We have a mission and there's no heart too hard for God. There's no such thing. The gospel doesn't work with these people. It's either we are not fully anointed, we are doing something that's not what God is not doing, God is do, not doing, or we are giving up too fast. There's no way Jesus went to a place and said, you know, he probably had a hard difficulty in healing. There's no way Jesus said, ah, this guy I don't want. The only person that Jesus you know, was always confronting was not sinners. It was Pharisees and Sadducees who knew the law. It was that those guys, you know, what two kind of spirit that put Jesus on the cross? It was not the sin of, just not the sin of man. He took on behalf of us. It was the political spirit and the spirit of relig- religiosity that nailed Jesus on the cross. And the same spirit you will see, Stephen will be stoned to death. Why? That political spirit was coming against the move of God through Stephen. I personally think Stephen shouldn't have died. But it was this, this spirit that crucified Stephen on the cross. 
They're talking about the global church, what I'm sensing in my heart. Calvary Community Church, the days are coming. The Lord's going to entrust us with greater nation, more nation, more souls, more people group. And God, next 10 years, we're going to get ready for what God is doing. Amen. We are a global church. Because Jesus said, go into the world. Jesus said, look at each one of us. And to Kathy, you can be sitting here. You can be, you know, you, you, know, you live from Tamandaya. But if you would catch the heart of God for mission, you would become a global person. It's a global. It's not ambitious. It's not ambitious deep. I want you to know, I, I, some of you are thinking, Pamela, this is for young people. No, I just heard a story. How many of you know YOM, you know, Youth with a Mission? His successor, Andy Byrne, um, his father, who's 78 years old, you know what he's doing now? He's in the University of Nepal. What he's doing is learning how to do a new way of technology of agri- agriculture. His heart is, before I die, I want to make sure that the Nepalis get their proper food. 78 years old. Somebody say, wow. So God is, God is a God of mission. We are a people of mission, and our vision is the global. We are a people that are the global. And you know, there's no such thing as, as gospel doesn't transform life. If the gospel that we, you know, there's no way the gospel we preach doesn't transform life. The gospel always transforms people. And what I'm getting at from this story that we I just shared that, that only if the church, we get the spirit of compassion and love, if we get the heart of God for this kind of people, when we get the heart of God for the mission and what God wants to do in us and through us, I'll talk about what mission is. You know, when we get the heart of God, when we begin to move by compassion and love, I tell you, we will see such a move of God in our city, in your family, in our city, in our nation, and the nation around the world. And somebody say, Amen. That's the heart of God that, you know, we need to capture the compassion. This kind of compassion is just a powerful tool of compassion. Church, I want you to know that when you move in the compassion and the love of God, you become an agent of change. You become the voice of God. You become the person that God looks for. You become the very voice of the Lord wherever you go because you carry the spirit of mission inside of you. When I talk about mission, as we talk about global, but I also don't want you to forget that first, first and foremost, you are a mission to Judea, Samaria, and Jerusalem. What does that mean? Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit come, first, you become a missionary to your own family. You become a missionary. Some, you know, turn, to, turn to your neighbor and say, you are a missionary to your family. You're a missionary to your family. Then you're a missionary to your city, to your, to your, to your f- spheres of influence. If God asks you, you huh? Oh. If God, <laughs> the, just, just, okay. <laughs> yes, your parents need to get saved. <laughs> That's what pastor is saying. You know, what God is doing, how do we become a global people that are impacting local church? This is how it happens. Do you know that as you know, we are called to be an evangelist wherever we go? Do the work of an evangelist. On the other side, also we are, we are people, you know, in the fivefold ministry, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a firm of, firm of, the first call of the church to be an apostle. What is an apostle? Apostle is like this. When you catch this heart, I believe that there's been impartation tonight for you to have the spirit of mission. Apostle is like this. In the, you know, they use from the Roman term, all right? The Roman, uh, Paul used from the Roman term. Apostle, to cut the story short, apostle is somebody who was sent out from a larger, a larger organization to a certain provinces for you to influence that provinces. So when the larger, when the Rome is coming to, let's say, coming to Taman Istimeva, no, Taman Istimeva must look like the Rome's kingdom. Does that make sense? How many of you know we are people of the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is within us. Wherever we go, we carry the you know, we bring the kingdom of God through preaching, through healing of the sea, whatever, wisdom, whatever. So when we talk about we carry the apostolic anointing, what does that mean? All of you are sent out to your, your own spheres of your influence for you to become the light and the salt wherever you are at. And this anointing is not for somebody who are preaching here. This anointing, this call is coming upon the body of Christ. Where every believer will walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. 
Every believer, all of you are anointed by the Lord. All of you are carrying the mission of heart. Wherever you go, that's your mission filled. If the, you know, the, if the, the good news it doesn't get it on time to where it's supposed to get, it is, cannot be a good news at all. You and I carry this mandate of this mission of heart, knowing that you are sent out by God. Wherever you are, you are sent out by God. You are sent out by God. Church, it's, it's time for us to not only just to think about mission, but we are called to, to do things for the Lord. Amen. An apostolic call, when you talk about going out, it's not just, you know, just going out, but it's, it's about wherever you are going, you see that as your mission field. You see that as your mission field. I can tell story after story, so how people get saved. When I was working back in, in Citibank and different places, God will just give an opportunity for me to share the gospel to them. You're an apostle, you carry an apostle, you know, sent one. You are the sent one of the Lord. The world needs to hear, you know, maybe you should have your last name as a sent one. Just a joke, you know. <laughs> you're sent into the apostolic, it's when, when your school, when your workplace, when the kingdom of God begin to penetrate into all this place. For example, Aaron, you are in a, in a, in a, in a social media world, you are, in a, you are in, a, in, a, in a photographic media world. That is your mission field. That's where the gospel needs to be preached. And we live in a such an age, church, I want you to know, we live in a such a place that, you know, the, the term globalization is, is happening so rapidly. Do you know that, you know, the, ever, ever in the history of the world, this is the only place that everything becomes common in the world. What do I mean by that? If you look at our young people's dress up, it's exactly how you can see people in Singapore, people in New York, Europe, all of them dress up the same. Why? There's a common thing that's happening. There's, a, there's a, this, this, you, this unifying factor. If you are wise enough, you know, God you know, can use this moment for the great harvest. In this moment of globalization, everything is just in a moment of media. God can spread his gospel in a moment. Young and old. This kind of compassion needs to hit the church. This kind of love needs to hit the church. And Jesus stepped out of his routine and said, I need to go. So there's, there's a mission movement that God's gonna give. There's a mission movement that what we have seen, God, God's gonna do way beyond what we can think. I wanted to talk, uh, uh, before I end, because we got some presentation stuff. Romans, Romans 14, I pray this become a spirit become your heartbeat. Romans 15, Paul says like this to Roman. This is before, before, uh, before Paul gets into Roman. We looked at God as a missional God. We looked at Jesus as a missional Jesus, and he calls us into that. And also, I don't want to forget Paul, who has you know, carried the heart of God, of missional spirit in him. You know, Paul said like this, you know, um, let's, you know, Romans, I give you context, and this is before Paul gets to Roman. You know, before he gets to Roman, do you know Paul wrote the letter first before we went to Roman? You know, he didn't write, he didn't write after. He read, actually wrote, you know, before. And, um, you know, verse 14, no, verse, verse 19. And in the power of the signs and wonder, in the power of spirit, so that from Jerusalem and all around so far as, uh, as uh, uh, Illyrium, and uh, I have fully preached the gospel. What Paul is saying is this, guys. It started from year to year. All these nations have fully preached the gospel. Are you saying like, I've, I've done all it. And Rome, I desire to see you. Rome, I want to, Rome, Ro Romans, I want to come to see you. But something is hindering me from coming. Worse, 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 what? Okay, verse 22 say, for this reason I often being prevented from coming to you. So Paul is saying, the reason I cannot come to see you, Rome. Now, Rome is a Christian city. It's a hub. It's talk about, it's like Calvary City Church. You know, people are amazing, worship is powerful, everyone comes on Sunday and goes back really quick. <laughs> Pastor Derek asked me to say that, okay, not me. 
<laughs> and uh, you know, it's an amazing church because we are a church on a mission. We are a church that we see miracles. Do you know, last couple of weeks, Pastor Ranjit just keeps saying, cancer is being healed, cancer is being healed. You know, we we're seeing miracles. I wonder, but before he gets to Calvary Community Church, he's telling, but I have these places that I've been preaching. And what is hindering me from coming to you? It's not anything else because I have to do what God has called me to do. What he's saying, I you know, then you look at the scripture, Paul is saying, I can come to you, we can have a gala time, but let me tell you, these are the pre- places that have not heard the gospel yet. So what hinder, may, may, may the gospel of Jesus hinder us from doing something that God is not doing. May the gospel of Jesus grip your heart, that we begin to be, Lord, what makes sense in the eyes of eternity? What, is, what makes sense? Do you know that a couple of things I want to talk about? Number one, your life is not life of humanly wisdom. We are not founded on earth. You know, just do the thing. We are an internal people, citizen of heaven with, with the with 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 mission of heaven. That everything we do is a fact internal life. Paul is saying, hindered me. What hindered me? These places that I'm not preach have hindered me from coming to, but I'm coming to you, Rome, why, you know? Because you need to give me the money to go to Jerusalem, he said. You need, I, need, I, need, I need you to generously give because the next phase of my life, I need you. What I'm sensing in this spirit is this, for the next move of the mission church, God needs your generous sowing. Pastor, I have, it's a thing that I feel the Lord actually wanted me to tell you that, that number one, the resources is not yours because God is the source of your finance. God is the source of your finance. I have a scripture for that, which I need to open and see. Pastor, just shoot one scripture. God is our sufficiency. 2 Corinthians 3, 5, it says, God is our sufficiency. You know, what Paul was saying, Romans church, listen, I need to go to Jerusalem, but I cannot go unless I meet you. I believe that this, we are in a very close zone. Listen carefully, church. Do you know that 50, 55,000 young people gathered in America without any flashlight, they were on the knee just worshiping the Lord. Let me give you, the, I, I want to bring the agency of the gospel to you, the mission world to you. You know why? God's, God's going to do something powerful through, through us, through prayer, giving, uh, through prayer, and uh, what else? Huh? Prayer, to, to give and to go. God's going to do that. You know, how I do I know that? Do you know the largest church in the world? Come on, wake up church. The largest church in the world is not in America. The largest church and fastest growing church, you know what God is doing is in Iran. Iran. For, for some reason, I cannot show you, but if you go to Google, Google Iranian Christians. When I was in America, I was doing a healing meeting in a small church. There was one young man right at the back. I say, young man, God is calling you as a belligerent to your nation. Little did I know, it's a guy from Iran. And uh, one of our friends, uh, Robbie, he does ministry in Iran. He said, there is a move, there's a genuine move, not church hopping, you know. It's a genuine move where thousands of people, and it started with the women getting saved first. All the women in the house, come on. God is on you. Do you know the first evangelist in the Bible? Who was the first evangelist apart from Jesus? It was the woman by the well. Yes. The first evangelist in the Bible was that girl, the lady, you know, that uh, the Samaritan, you know, by the well. Do you know that she became an apostle? She she would she got crucified and became a martyr for Jesus. He was a woman, first evangelist, and God is moving Iran. Another statistic that came, you know, what, God, what God is doing. Do you know that in Af- uh, Afghanistan, there's such a move of God right now. Churches are being filled. It's just a matter of time and prayer and hunger and giving for Malaysia to experience the same move of God. Hallelujah! Come on! 
We are living a very powerful time. Some of you will feel the tugging as I'm preaching. Why? God has a way greater dream for you. God has a mission and purpose for you. We are not sitting here to fulfill our Christian duty. We are sitting here to fulfill the great commission of the Lord. Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creatures and make disciples of all nations. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Before I go five minutes, then I'll be done. Is that okay? Five minutes. Just five minutes. Huh? Yeah, I'm giving. <laughs> and Paul needed Rome to give. And, and you know, it's not that Paul, Paul didn't have all this while. I tell you something. There's a certain time God will require us to give beyond what we have given, far and beyond why. There's something that God's going to do that you and I need to live in this moment of sacrifice. Sacrifice. Jesus, the king of glory, became a humble servant to came to serve and to seek the Lord because he had a mission in his heart. The new building is not just about a building. If you think it's about the building and the extravagance of light and whatever, it is not. God, is, God has something in his mind in the future that he's going to unpack for Calvary Community Church. He already unpacked revival and different things. God is preparing. We are building like Noah because there's a revival coming. We are building him a house. We are not building him a center. We are not building him a place where everybody, we are building for, for, for him a house where his presence is going to come. And I want to just talk about this one man and, and I'll be done. Your giving is, is, when you're giving, can propel the move of God. If you want to see, you want to see Jesus come back quickly, I think every, every, every cent in the world, every penny in the world, if it's given to a mission, know what happened, we will hasten, hasten the coming of the Lord. Because then the preach of gospel will be taken to the ends of the earth. We are giving. When you give to the Lord, I want you to know, you know, the church, you guys are giver. So I just want to touch a little bit. I think um, we, we, I'm, not, I'm not saying, uh, what I'm saying is we are giving, but this giving is going to change the next 10 years of the mission world in our city far and beyond. Far and beyond. And, 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 the, and, and we only, God can only do this with a couple of things. Number one, when we give sac- sacrificially, knowing that our resources comes from God. Do you know that when you give, certain poverty spirit breaks over your life? P- poverty spirit breaks over your life when we give unto the Lord, to the kingdom of God. Because for this, you know, he became rich, uh, he became poor, so we can inherit the richness of God. If you want an increase in your finance, if you want to say, Lord, I want to see a greater breakthrough in my life, and I want to finance, I tell you something, don't just give, give generously this season. Really, I'm telling you. And you know, sometimes the giving has to hurt our emotions, because why? And then we know that actually we are submitted to the Lordship of Jesus. Amen. How do we know actually we really the Lord, use the Lord of our life? Some giving has to hurt us. Oh God, why are you asking this? No, that's for a cause. There's a cause. Take this thought. Every finance that's being given becomes a soldier in the world to fight for the kingdom of God to invade and expand. That's what every sin means. Amen. Amen. Wife, if your husband is selling your house, don't blame me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And, and uh, I just want to, I just want to, I really feel like I'm supposed to say this before I give to you. Um, a mission man, uh, um, Z- uh, Z- Count Zenzadov, uh, was a European uh, man that God used powerfully, and his picture is going to come up in a bit. And he was a very, very, very naive Christian. In the age of three, he had an encounter with the Lord. And at the age of five, six, actually, he wrote, he wrote, he wrote love letter to Jesus. You know, why I'm saying this, the very mission movement after the apostle, right, this, this is the guy that God used to bring back the mission movement. John Wesley, the great awakening, second awakening, we're going to explain the third, third awakening, speaking of tongues, healing, all of that because of this man, one yes to what God asked him to do. 
All right, so what, the, you know, what happened, to cut, long story short, which I want to make an altar call this morning to this story. You know, you know, when, you know this man had a, such an amazing heart for the Lord, but one day, you know, he, you know, he, you know at the age of 16, he wrote a, 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 a thesis on, on the mustard seed that was actually used by all the influential guys in Europe to, to, to give a dedicated, live a dedicated influential life for Europe. So that's how this young man was impacting. As he grew older, become very wealthy. How many of you know when you do the work of the Lord, you, you get blessed? Your children get blessed. Amen. And, 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 he be, and as, 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 as he was just doing his life, a certain point of his life, so some divine appointment happened in his life. He, be, he met this young man that was on the other side of the nation in Germany that were being persecuted for being a Christian. And he met with Zenzadov, you know, and it happened that you know, Zenzadov had a defining moment in his life. And he heard that the Christians are being persecuted. And so Zenzadov said, come, my, my house is on a hill, but I want you to give the estate. I want to give you this place. And they cleared all the trees and said, why don't you stay here? And then these brothers called Moverian's brother, who were being persecuted for Christians, for being a Protestant believer, started moving to this estate. As they were keep coming, he kicked coming. They take down the trees, take down the Moverian brothers, okay? If you know the history of the Christianity, Google and read on Moverian's brother, it will blow your mind. You know, they were clearing the estates, and sooner or later, there was a community of a Moverian, you know, uh, immigrant that came into that land. So, Zen Zedot was very happy. My wealth is helping people. It's great. We are doing this stuff. And then one day, in the, in the midst of this powerful community that's being here, that, that happened a division among them. They were fighting for a few things. There was almost like a split. It was as if uh, Zen Zedot's dream is about to crumble. This is what? It was a matter of decision. It was a matter of like, man, am I going to stay in, a, in, my, in my palace or do I have to get into? And then the Lord spoke to him and said, will you do, you know, Will you, will you make a difference, right? So he went into, into this community and he carried this vision in his heart. Uh, before all this thing happened, he went to see a, a museum. In the museum, he saw Jesus with a crown and with a blur in the, below the museum heart. He says, behold, behold the king. And he said, for what he did in, for, for your life, what will you do for him? For what he did for you, what would you do for him? That inspired him and he started the whole movement. So he gets into the settlement to bring peace and unity. This will blow your mind because we are living in this, this, this hour of revival. What I say this, in, you know, he brought that community together. You know, not through his specific, he just, he just talked about unity. And if, you know, as the unity is being brought into the, from the division camp, as the people were gathering together, and one morning they were worshiping the Lord, and while worshiping of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord came upon the Moverian brothers. And they said this in the, in the, in the, in the history, right? they said this, we didn't, know the, we didn't know the difference between heaven and earth. That's how tangible the glory of God were. And as they were experiencing this revival of prayer, the Lord gave them a revelation in the prayer. When the they, when they worship is going on, when they were just worshiping, they didn't pray first. They were just worshiping as the glory of the Lord came. And in the, in the, in the moment, the, you know, they got this revelation that the accuser of the brethren is accusing the brethren. So we need to pray that the accuser of the brethren won't accuse the brethren. Number two, they took Levitical, I think, chapter 15, where in the Ark of Covenant, in the Ark of the Temple of God, the, the fire of God cannot go down. They there must be a continually worship and prayer. And when this Moverian brother got, the Spirit of the Lord fell upon them, what happened is these guys begin to become a prayer movement. Long story short, these Moverian brothers prayed for 100 years. 100 years of prayer meeting that happened in this moment. And one fine morning, I say this, one fine morning, the young man, God, you know, God, you know, this is, this is the, you know, this is probably the, you know, the, the heart. And, and as they were, as they were, as they were praying and worshiping and they were praying in unity and worshiping, the spirit of the Lord fell on a young man and he began to have a vision for the world. He began to say this, you know, he began to have heart for the world. And three of them gathered together, three o'clock in the morning in 19, 1752 in a cold weather of German snow, these Moverian brothers were praying. They were praying for revival. They were praying for nations to be saved. One of the prayer is, may the lamb receive the, the reward for his suffering. 
May the Lamb of God receive the reward for his suffering. The next slide. And three brothers, three young men, gave their life to the missions. Three o'clock in the morning, they were ordained and sent. You know where they were sent? They went, they were sent to the Caribbeans on the ship on a one-way ticket because they heard that that particular African brothers have not heard the gospel. They said this, the blood of Jesus cannot be kept. The blood, the, 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 the Lamb of God must be preached. They went into that, that ship and they never came back. They died as a first missionary into the Caribbeans. One week of prayer become seven days, eight days, and what God was doing, why? There was a mission prayer spirit that were release that propel all the other move of God, like, you know, p- uh, we're talking about Azusa, John Wesley, all of that, because Zen Zadov used to get out of his comfort zone and say, God, I need to do what you're asking me to do. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but when I was reading this, and I really felt, God is still looking for a man and woman. That, you know, we will never know church, your, your prayer, your giving. I remember the first time I was supposed to go to mission, right? Second time, I didn't have money. Pastor Rajan and said, you know, maybe go next time. We don't have. You know, Auntie Magdalene and Chayong was the first one to say, we will give you the thousand ringgit. And I went to India to pass the first time I ever saw a man walk out from the, from a, you know, he was lame. He walked out. And Pastor Rajan brought me to pray, help him. But God was crafting a mission heart. Later did I know I was preaching in Africa among 5,000 people, you know, and seeing soul get saved. It, 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 it started with one sacrificial purpose and said, I don't know, this young man, there's something about this young man will give 1,000 ringgit. And what I'm sensing this tonight is not only God wants you to give, but God wants to pour out the spirit of mission over your heart. It could be a prayer. That's why I pray that you will come for prayer meeting next week. And I'm prepared that we should pray for nations. We need to pray for nations. I want you to stand to your feet before the dean comes. I want to lift your hands to the Lord. Father, every hand's lifted up in this place. We're going we're gonna to hear the mission report. Uh, do go back first. We're going to hear the mission report, and then we're going to pray for you. I want every hand's lifted up. Some can go, some cannot go, but both as a part to play in this great commission. I'm not sharing this that we need money. I'm just sharing this because there's a generation that's waiting for us. That's why this season we felt like we're supposed to work on Vietnam, the nation Vietnam, as they're going to put the map of Vietnam on the, on the screen. I want you to pray for this nation. Can you do that? There's a new anchoring nation. And the Lord told me that bring a couple of people and pray for prophetic destiny over Vietnam. And Vietnam is ready for the arrival. It's ready for the move of God. And, you know, as, as we pray for Vietnam, let the Lord give you a heart for mission in your own circle, in your family, in your spirit of influence in the city and our nation. Come on, I want you to lift your voice and begin to say, you know, one of the things the Moravian brothers pray, Lord, would you give us, would you, Lord, visit nations, God? Would you visit Bulgaria, God? Would you come? Would you come, God? I want you to lift your voice and begin to pray nations of the world. Can we do that? Come on. This is a mission week. We don't want to just lose a moment. You know, we want to pray for the nation. Ask God, what is the nation that God given to you? It's okay, uncle. You might not be able to go, but you know, I tell you what, your prayer can reach there. Come on, let's pray for the nation of the world. Can we do that? Come on. Let's begin to pray in the spirit of God. Won't you come over Thailand? Won't you come, oh God, over Lord, nations, God, over Europe, God. America needs you badly, God. Come on, let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Just take a moment before we just hear all the things. Father, we just pray even tonight, this morning, God, let the spirit of mission oh, be revived in Calvary Community Church, God, all over, God. Give us our heart. Oh, why we do this one more time? Come on, would you just join with me say Lord like Isaiah send me to the Lord send me here I am God either my prayer or my giving or my going God let it impact the nations around the world God and finally as you lift your hands to the Lord Father I pray for the spirit of revival among your people God could it be that some of you are going to wake up in the morning God's going to talk God's going to show you nations to pray for could it be that like Moverian brothers their heart will be moved to pray that you'll answer the call of God. Father, I pray for your people. 
as the word is preached tonight, this morning, let there be a fresh commitment, renewed commitment for the mission world, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody say, Amen. Can we give the Lord a mighty clap? And let's welcome Auntie Ding. Hang in there, okay? I'll be finished soon. Good morning, everyone. Okay, um, I'm here to present the re financial report for the last six months. Pardon my voice. Huh? <coughs> no, it's okay, fine. Okay, we have uh, budgeted 300,000. Uh, we collected 211083, so the percentage uh, collected is 70.36%. <laughs> right? Now, our payments are very standard, okay? For the six months, we will give PKK 80,880. What did I read? You read that. Ah, you Come stay there. Okay, Pusat Kabajikan Calvary <laughs> received 80,880. The rest are outreach or local ministry support. Orang Asli Slim River, 21,000. Orang Asli Johor, 24,000. Prayer Tower, 12,000. Rohingya Ministry, 15,000. Come on. Uh, um, uh, uh, come on. Uh, um, Myanmar. Sorry. <laughs> Being naughty. <laughs> 13,000. Myanmar, 13,000. The total becomes 85,200. Come on, change the slide. Okay, local missions, local, local pastors, pastors support. with about 12,000. <laughs> Save your voice, huh? Okay. To total local missions is 178,080 ringgit. Foreign missions, very low. Transformation Welfare Society, 7,000. Nepali Pastors Conference, 2,000. Total foreign missions, 9,000. Total payment, 187,080. Next slide, please. Total received 211.083, total payment 187087, and we have a surplus of 24,000. You can put your hands together yeah. and give Jesus the glory, and um, balance brought forward from June, the last pledge, 2,969. Therefore, we have a total of 26,000. 972. Anyone wants to go for missions, we can help you. Now, this is a new budget from uh, January to June. Uh, you talk, okay? Okay. <laughs> we are going to increase by faith our budget, okay? Yeah. Uh, you patiently, patiently wait, huh? Okay, PKK, we target to give 60,000. OA Slim River, 21,000. Pastor, don't catch on me, okay? Orang Asli Johor, 24,000. Myanmar Ministry, 13,200. Prayer Tower, 12,000. And Rohingya Ministry, 15,000. So we also have continue our local pastor support, 12,000. So this makes 157,200 for local missions. Okay, coming to there, foreign missions. Okay, hopefully or prayerfully, we by faith try to give uh, TA, okay? 23,800, the president is here by the way. Yeah? 142,800 is our target. And Vietnam visions, that's what uh, Pastor John was talking, it's a new area. Okay, I think we have been stuck with all our past things now, it's time, it's a new season. Uh, ah. <laughs> the Vietnamese are not coming, so we go to them. Okay, 30,000, all right. So the total missions budget is 3301. Three more zeros, okay? 330,000. All right, how do you give to missions? By now, you should memorize the bank account number is all there. And the numbers are also, the details are also at the board behind. Okay, if, if you are giving to PKK and you want a tax receipt, okay, please supply or provide your IC name, IC number, and also WhatsApp the details to me so we can issue you a tax receipt. Okay, I'm done here. Thank you very much. I passed this Thank you, Sister Ding. Thank you for the word. Uh, media, just give me two more minutes. Can we have the Transformation Alliance video, please?
Actually, this is what we are doing right now, apart from Vietnam, apart from PKK, apart from all our local missions. India. This is where Pastor E.T. is anchoring. Pastor E.T. told me one day he wants to go as a missionary to uh, North India. Just hold him on his word. <laughs> he said, pray for my wife, he said. <laughs> Thank you. We want you to stand to your feet right now. Thank you, Lord. We're going to dismiss you in a short while. Thank you, Jesus. Two things we want to do. Number one, every eyes closed, lift up your hands to Jesus. We're not taking a faith pledge, but we're taking a heart pledge. How much is God wanting you to give the next six months? Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Father, we thank you. For Calvary Community Church, for, for years they have been giving and giving. Even after COVID, when we abolished the faith card, Lord, they gave out of their heart. 70% of the total budget. And I pray right now, you will speak to them. We will not shortchange missions giving by diverting our giving to our building. But we want to give to missions. Thank you, dear Father. That's your heartbeat. Speak to each one of us how much to give. It could be just one time. It could be six months. Lord, speak to them. Speak to us. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. That's right. Let the Lord speak to you. Let your glory fall. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just reach out to the Lord. From here to the nations, let your fragrance rest in this place as we gather to see your face. That's number one. Number two, how many of you would say this morning, Lord? I've got a mission's heart. Forget about um, going first. Going, let God determine. But this morning, I've got a mission's heart. My heart is beating for missions. Someday, I want to go, but now I want to pray, and I want to give, and Lord, touch me, and I want to be fully involved in missions. I want to be a missions person. All over this place, I wanted to just, if you're that person, lift up your hands, please. That's right. I see hands going up. Wow. Come on. Lift it high. I'm not going to make an altar call. I'm going to pray from here. Come on. Just lift it high. My heart is for missions. For now, I'm going to pray. For now, I'm going to give. But that's coming a day I want to go. Hallelujah. As your hands are lifted up, I'm going to ask Pastor Jonathan to come and just lead us in prayer. Come on, keep your hands high. Hear my, send me, Lord. Let the Lord seal this calling. Come on, let, Father, we just thank you for your presence in this place. As every answer are lifted up. Lord, I pray for such an impartation over them, God. Let it start from their secret place. The prayer for nations. Prayer for, Lord, those, those, prayer for the unrich group. 
and pray for people that, that are yet to hear the gospel of Jesus. As hands are lifted up, Father, I pray at your appointed time and appointed Lord season and appointed plan, God, you will send them, whether short term or long term, to places you want them to go, Father. We have one life. Let it make sense in the eyes of eternity. We thank you, Lord. We pray for your blessing upon those who are, Lord, have a heart for mission, Lord, in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together, give Jesus the glory. Wow. Pastor Boy, can you open the door? He'll be at the gate to greet you. Uh, Pastor Jonathan will be there. He'll be talking to you about the mere Vietnam missions. Pastor, um, Pastor Derek and myself, Pastor Christine, will be here to pray for you if you want to be prayed for. Come on, stretch your hands. I want to bless you. Come on, stretch your hands towards me. I want to bless you. Say this together with me, please. I declare. I declare. The blood, of Jesus the blood of Jesus is my covering. Is my covering. I, declare I declare the word of God, word of is, God my is my position. I declare, I declare the name of Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ is my, uh, my, authority. my authority. I declare, I declare the, faithfulness the faithfulness of God is my victory. Is my victory. I, declare I declare the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is my new strength. Is my new I declare, I declare the grace of God grace is, of my God is my sufficiency. I declare, I declare the mercies of God, mercies of are, God. My are my forgiveness. I'm set free. I'm, set free. I'm a generation of freedom. I'm a generation Thank of freedom. you, Lord. In Jesus' name, In Jesus I, declare. I declare. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Go with the blessings of God. You need to be prayed. Come forward. Otherwise, you are dismissed for God's glory.